and I just got done watching 1998's Saving Private Ryan starring Tom Hanks, Matt Damon, Tom Sizemore and Barry Pepper. Um, this one I've seen numerous times before and I never get tired of it. Uh, for those who don't know, how could you not? Uh, it tells a tale of um, Captain, uh, shortly after uh, the Normandy landings, uh, Captain Miller, played by Tom Hanks, and a group of other soldiers are sent to uh, seek out a, a private James Ryan, played by Matt Damon, uh, after um, his mother is told that his three brothers have, also, uh, have uh, all died in combat. And uh, Jules C. Marshall, the uh, uh, Army Chief of Staff, uh, has uh, declared that um, James needs to come back to his, the youngest of the brothers, uh, should be allowed to come back to his mother. Uh, so Captain Miller and these other soldiers, uh, including uh, Giovanni Rabisi, uh, like I say, Barry Pepper, who's like this sniper, uh, you got this, uh, I can't think of his name, oh. Anyway, there's a, lo there's a good group of them, all very different characters. Uh, they cross France to uh, find Private Ryan and uh, <laughs> try to get him home. Uh, except when they finally find him, he's like, no, all my brothers are dead, I need to stay here with my brothers you know, brothers in arms, uh, my, my, my brothers are still alive, I need to be here to help them. Uh, so it's a really good, it's, it's, it's an excellent movie that uh, brilliantly uh, directed by Steven Spielberg uh, and it, it's, it's an excellent study of you know, it's one of those movies that doesn't really glorify war or anything. I mean, yeah, you've got the whole patriotic thing, you know, starting and ending with the American flag and stuff. And um, But there's nothing that really glorifies uh, war or that. It is shown to be, you know, it drives you mad that it's, you know, it's just the gore and this movie it shows them you know crossing uh, uh, crossing France and you get a lot of insight into the characters and you see them bonding or not bonding and uh, the whole thing is kind of bookended by these big yeah, action set pieces uh, primarily of course the uh, Omaha Beach uh, uh, taking uh, which was is kind of like when everybody thinks of this movie, that is kind of the scene that is thought of. I think because just the sheer scale of it, and you know all the squibs and the make, you know the digital uh, makeup and uh, digital effects and the makeup and stuff like that, just the whole scale of it is insane. And I think at the time it hadn't really been seen. Uh, to this, uh, to this extent, that kind of scene. Um, but yeah, it's 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 an excellent story. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tom Hanks anyway. Uh, he's not as big a role in. I, I feel this is a very ensemble cast. Uh, so I don't feel like anybody really stands out more than anybody else, uh, which is good because this is the kind of movie that I think. Uh, some like celebrities would go no I must be the big hero and I must be the one who survives and nobody else is allowed to be glorified uh, whereas I feel here like I don't really feel like that's the case uh, which I really enjoy uh, the movie is two hours 40 minutes so it can feel long at times uh, but nothing is extraneous like I say all the pieces as they go from uh, bit to bit, uh, and and even you know make a mess up when they think they've got the the right James Pro, uh, Private James Ryan, and it turns out it's the wrong one. And even funnier is the fact that the wrong Ryan is played by Nathan Fillion, who I'm also a big fan of. Uh, but everything here feels necessary, and you need those quiet moments, and you need those dramatic moments. 
otherwise you don't really care about the characters. I mean, even when uh, Giovanni Ribisi's uh, medic uh, is killed, uh, although he's not had much screen time, you still really feel like, just like the wind's been knocked out of you. And I think, you know, as, as dramas go, this and, and, and war movies go, this is an excellent... And I think a lot of people have tried to copy it since to, to try and capitalise on on what this movie did at the time. Uh, of course, if it wasn't for this movie, uh, the excellent band of brothers wouldn't exist. Uh, so, you know, the, the kind of legacy of this movie went on even in that sense. Um, if you are after a good war movie, if you're after a good drama, uh, if you're after seeing stuff uh, with a lot of familiar faces, I mean, my God, Ted Danson, Paul Giamatti, uh, you know, there's so many familiar faces in this, it's uh, insane. Um, just, you do have to get past the runtime. It does feel that at times, but at no point does it drag. I, I could sit through this, and I have sat through it several times, uh, I could sit through it again uh, easily. Uh, you just really have to set the time by for it. Uh, my only, I guess if I was really going to nitpick about anything about this, because I don't really have any issues with it, uh, this kind of movie, they're very good at like the sound levels, like the uh, speaking is very low, and then you have all this gunfire and that is really loud. And it's just gone three o'clock in the morning here and uh, you know I have neighbours and it's very difficult to uh, try and uh, balance the volume I mean obviously you know the, I guess the solution to that would not be to watch movies this late at night but uh, <laughs> it's just I always hate that kind of thing where they have the sound effects are so so much louder than the uh, speaking and dialogue um, and especially when they, they kind of um, uh, are overlaid, when you're trying to hear what's being said. And I know sometimes it's done with effect in that you're not supposed to be able to hear what they're saying. Um, but there's other times I'd like to know what they not have to turn on subtitles to figure out what's being said. Uh, so that's the only nitpick. And I mean, that's such a tiny little thing. And it's something that turns up on all, all movies. So it's not even exclusive to, to this one. Um, that's my only nitpick. Otherwise, this is a good, strong 9 out of 10, uh, easily. Uh, because just everything about it is excellent. It's beautifully directed. Uh, great cinematography. Uh, like I say, I mean, even... I know some of this is digital, but it doesn't look digital. Uh, it looks so real. I don't... I don't feel... I feel a lot of it is practical effects more, and... And obviously something like this now would just be nothing but CGI and look fake. But this looks real. It's gritty. Uh, it's just worth checking out if you like your war movies, and, and generally if you're after a good action movie, and, and certainly one of Tom Hanks's uh, better roles. Uh, that was 1998's Saving Private Ryan. Uh, that was tonight's movie. We're back again tomorrow, of course, uh, with a comedy. Uh, so just to change up, we've had dramas and thrillers and, and, and nice gory uh, war movies, but tomorrow will be a comedy, so nice change up in pace. Uh, but for now though, just want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you do. Please share your thoughts on this movie or or, or share what your favourite war movies are. Um, but for now though, this is Sketch. Sign it out.